Hi, Asra. Hi, Mr. Can you hear me? Yes. So you're connected already for a while. Mm, uh, okay. Are you going to record or? Um, I think it's uh, recorded already, right? I, yeah, I think it starts. Uh, okay. Yeah, because the start recording button is already on. Okay. Let me see. I said change my background. Can you see on the screen now, the flag? Yes. Okay. Let me test some. Okay. My background is not showing, right? Yeah. Let me leave and, and come back. So anyone else join or not yet? Uh, I see not yet. Okay. Let me leave and come back just a second. Okay. Before, okay. Okay, so yeah, somehow I couldn't apply the background. So we, uh, yeah, you're muted, Asra. What else here? Can you, yeah. But you had confirmations, right? That people will join, not just sign up. Yeah, I try to check. I think people are um, going to, you know, to move from the work to the lunch. So we, mm -hmm. we just 
wait for a while for them to do yeah them. we'll wait a bit as attendees. Are you sure they received the email? Yes. So they have a 10 and 10 this year. Mm. Sorry? I saw in the, you know, in the uh, thing works, they say 10 and 10 this, but I cannot see people in the. You know? 10 and 10 this, what? Connected? Or? Yeah, this 11 and 10 this. I think. Let me check. Is the link you sent to me the same you sent to the rest? But I, I just see you and me only. Let me call Maria, see if she's connected. Yeah. Maria already logged in. No, I'm calling you. Mm, Hello, okay. Noria. Are you connected to the event? Or oh, you joined through the attendee link because we are in, an, in another link. Um, uh, no. no, so do you see other attendees there? Do you see other attendees there, Noria?
I think you uh, mute Marcelo. Yeah. Okay, uh, Ashraf, I think we can start. Okay. Uh, we have already some attendees joining. Um, mm. So, yeah, it's just that we can't see the participants list here. Um, but I already got confirmation from Maria that um, people are joining. The slide and people, some people are joining. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, let's start with you first. Okay. So. So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to this event. This will be um, uh, part of uh, four events that we will be doing for the uh, Malaysia uh, customers that we have, customers and prospects. So I'm Marcel Morin. You might know me from previous events. Um, I'm the business development uh, manager for Graphics of Singapore and Malaysia, and we have been uh, doing a few events um, over last year and this year in this uh, live uh, online uh, way so that we can still keep connected uh, even when we can't meet in person. So hopefully this will, um, we will pass this, this uh, pandemic situation and after that we can go back to have these events face to face. So next slide please. Okay, so um, in today's session, um, this is part of a series of uh, 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 sharing sessions that are technical. So pretty much we chose four topics that we'll, we will introduce to you. Uh, today's program will be on Rhino Grasshopper Architect Live Connection. In this session, we will show you um, the benefits of uh, Rhino Grasshopper Connection. So why should we uh, embrace this kind of technology? And the example we'll show is a parametric tower by using the three softwares connected, Rhino, Grasshopper, and Nofcare. So after that, we'll have a Q&A session. So please, uh, during the session, you just uh, click on the on the chat uh, or on the conversation uh, uh, icon, and you can put your questions there. Or uh, we can, uh, I think if you can raise your arm, I don't know is possible or, or just write the, the questions on the chat and we will address them yes uh, well. hello. maybe we can test the audience first because you know Ria say that he, she didn't see uh, you know the slide in the one and nobody talked oh okay maybe uh, everyone can respond to the, the chat there. If yeah, you can, can you yeah. just put on the, on the chat that uh, if you're able to connect? So what what is the issue? They cannot see the PowerPoint presentation, is it? Yes. Yeah. Oh, so maybe they have some delay. Um, about twenty seconds, right? Yeah, there is a bit of delay for sure, but I don't. I think that the whole delay is the voice and everything. Mm, okay. Uh, let uh, we wait for the response first. But as for after the live event, there's always a delay. So I think that we we should continue, and then people will write the answers or the questions. Okay. And okay. Let's we'll say that can see. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I think I'll pass it on to you then. Um, and you can start okay. with, the, with the session. OK, thank you everyone for joining. I'm looking forward for the next session. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Ashraf Reza. I'm business development and deep implementation of Graphisoft. Uh, so I think uh, some of you already uh, know me. Uh, we even even have been met uh, before. So. Today, what I'm gonna show you is uh, how, what is, uh, you know, how we gonna do live connection uh, using Rhino Grasshopper Archicad. Uh, but specifically, um, we try to focus to create some simple parametric tower. 
to do as a live presentation. So before that, uh, uh, before we start to uh, the session, I think it's better to talk a little bit about the tools that we're going to use. Uh, the first one is a Rhino. Uh, so um, so uh, just give a little brief about the Rhino. Rhino uh, actually is a 3D modeling tool that uh, can perform a complicated shape like uh, knob or organic modeling or design. Uh, and on the other hand is a grasshopper. Uh, the tool that we can use to mapping, automate and translate parameter design and also the to create and manipulate the data or element in ITCAD directly. And then the third one is a, of course it's a ITCAD, it's an authorizing tool, BIM tool for producing conceptual design, model and also documentation for the ITCAD or the project. Okay, so the idea is uh, from here uh, we can use uh, 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 inside the rhinoceros they have an add-on called grasshopper and also inside in Archicad also we need to install the uh, Archicad uh, grasshopper live connection. So the both uh, of the grasshopper can be top each other. Uh, the idea is we can set the rule or any parameter in the grasshopper and instantly it will preview in the rhinoceros first after we get the shape or design that we want then we can uh, send the changes to the archicad uh, and also uh, we can do some changes in archicad also it will lead back to the grasshopper so it's like a re bi-directional so you can control and manipulate the data from grasshopper Okay, so before that, uh, I think uh, we, we just give a little brief about the, you know, this is the new way to design a beam. So uh, we, we think to, uh, uh, we tend to think uh, of uh, algorithm, algorithm, uh, algorithm mix design and beam as two separate components of the design, right? But as you can see in the right side, uh, the blue one actually is a beam. Uh, uh, site we usually starting from the concept vision development until the construction stage we using uh, authority tool like ikicad to do the the drawing documentation uh, the classification of the beam model but at the same time we have also the uh, algorithm design that we can uh, use and mutually inform and enrich in the process so uh, Algorithmic design, uh, I think we can bring analytic tool and flexible form so we can, in the concurrently, you can work together as a one uh, platform. So when we do some changes, right, so we can use algorithm design to create some uh, more, uh, you know, uh, metadata and the scheduling to easier handling of virtual building. So I think this separate uh, phase of the design uh, is not a split, but it can be overlapping and concurrently work together. So, in the other hand, uh, they have also the Rhino. We can have a GDL Rhino. Uh, it's like a kind of library in Archicad. We can manipulate uh, the uh, GDL object in Rhino and convert to the Archicad. And also we have uh, the Rhino itself to to use to create some design or modeling, uh, especially like I say the knob and you know like um, uh, um, uh, uh, you know complicated or sophisticated draw and uh, design by using Rhino. And also we have a bridge the Grasshopper to connection between uh, Rhino and Archicad through Grasshopper, so we can manipulate the data or anything or uh, the parametric classification let's say that building uh you know material by through graphics of before uh, pass to the archicad or revert back to the rhino okay so uh, before that i want to before we start to use the rhino grasshopper archicad live connection i want to make some uh, you know uh, uh, highlight before so, uh, 
you can go to the website uh, this uh, slash download or you can scan the QR code here and click this cat rhino and grasshopper you will get all the rhino grasshopper architect tool set so uh, from the rhino part it will give you 19 days trial so for you to try out and play around with the rhino and grasshopper so inside rhino automatically they have a grasshopper already so just install the rhino and it will be grasshopper inside that but uh, you just what well, one important thing you need to do is just scan this qr code and install this grasshopper architect live connection to make sure that architect and rhino can be communicate you can scan this QR code and download either you're using Windows or Mac OS. Uh, just uh, for important notes also that currently we don't support Rhino 7 because it's just launched. Uh, so you can uh, see from uh, this and maybe you can read some important notes here. Okay. Now I'm going to start to do the live demo of the parametric tower. So before we start, uh, please make sure that uh, Grasshopper Archicad Live Connection need to install and run first. Okay. Now I'm going to share my screen. Before that, can I test out? Can you see your screen now, Marcelo? Sorry, I need to check first. Yes, now is uh, the slide for the live demo. It's not yet showing the Rhino Grass Let me check. Try to share the screen. Can you see the screen now? Is showing the now the oh sorry. the teams yeah. Okay. Can you see huh? now? Yes. Okay. So now yes. First of all, so, uh, as you can see now, uh, the the left side is a rhino. I already opened the rhino, and the right side is a archicat. Okay. Okay, before we start everything, uh, make sure to uh, all our Rhino and Articat are running first. So I just type a command, grasshopper here. Okay, just choose this grasshopper automatically, it will uh, launch the grasshopper. Okay. So as you can see now, uh, they have a, on at the top is a grasshopper, the left side is a rhino, and the right side is a archicat. Okay. So um, so our uh, task today is to de develop a parametric tower design as an example. As you can see in Archicad, I already create some building site and the base uh, building as an example. Okay, what we're gonna do is uh, I, I will activate the Grasshopper Live connection first in Archicad. So how to do that? Just go to the window, palette, and click Grasshopper connection. Okay, then I will click this start the connection. So now you can see uh, the grass support already connected to the Archicad. So uh, what I'm going to do uh, next is in uh, grass support, you can see there for Archicad palette here. So uh, if I zoom to the Archicad, you can see I already created um, 
hexagon polyline in my KitKat. What I'm going to do now, I just use this 2D curve and drag to the uh, gas super here. Okay. Okay, move a little bit. Then I will right click and set one 2D curve in my KitKat under 2D curve. After I click that one, you can see uh, automatically uh, Rhino and Grasshopper is hidden from the background. So uh, it's, uh, the the idea is it will push us to go to the ArchiCAD to select the element that we're gonna use to replicate in the Grasshopper. So let's say now I click this uh, polyline, the hexagon polyline. Okay, then. If I go to the Rhino, if I zoom a little bit, you can see automatically this uh, shape already go to the Rhino. Okay, maybe I just close this. Um, just close this view. I think we don't need to do to have that. Yeah, let me check. Where is this? Close view part. Okay, this one also I want to close. We just leave it the perspective view. Okay. I'll just make a okay. okay. So you can see now the shape from the Akika already go to the Rhino through the grass super connection. So the next step I want to convert the polyline from Akika to the grass super curve. So I just click this parameter and drag this curve element and link to here okay now the if i click this one you can see this turn to the green means this re, uh, refer to the new line as a uh, curve for the rhino already it's a converted already okay so the next step is uh, i will go to the uh lean i would i would type we call that linear array okay l i r e yeah okay so so when i uh use this curve and link to the geometry yeah, I can see now they have some point line there. Before that, I think I need to change the uh, unit for the Rhino first. When I go to here, change the unit from millimeter to meter because uh, we, we use meter as a unit and click OK. So when I, you can see now automatically when I use this linear, it will automatically multiply the the line that we already created before. Okay. So the purpose of this linear we want to create um it's like we copy or uh, you know we multiply the shape that we already created and then the next one I will put the unix that uh as a you know direction to the vertical direction and i link this direction to here so automatically you can see under rhino the direction of the shape already go to the s of vertical because we use z unit as a vertical okay so for the next step is what i'm gonna do is i will put a we call that slider so i just uh, type slider here so the purpose of the slider is to change the the numbers of the info right now i want to uh, set this slider as the height of the floor let's say right or height of the story okay and i will set the maximum height maybe to three meter okay and then click ok so when I link this to here, you can see the the what I call the height of each uh, floor already 
our story already changes. If I move this one, you can see it will be moved based on the rule that we set on the slider. Okay. Okay, uh, I think you mm, you guys can understand that one. Okay, the another slide that I want to put is a count. Count uh, means uh, how much you want to set the story of the the shape that we already created now. So same, you can just click and type slider, get this number slider, or you can just hold this and click alternate automatically it will be duplicate then i will change this to number of story let's see right okay and maybe i set the maximum height to maybe 20 and click okay maybe i need to change the the rounding to uh, numeric and click okay so we change the numeric now let's say i link this to the count you can see automatically in rhino so it turned to one two three four five right so if i uh, increase this number you can see also the floor already already uh, increased okay like that so the idea is we can manipulate the the what I call the floor by using this slider okay uh, i think it's quite pretty easy right <laughs> so of course this is an example only so you can have an idea how you can play around with uh, grass super so the next part is um i want to put things called rotate okay rotate i click this one then what i'm gonna do is i will link this geometry to this rotate now as you can see it already rotated but in not in the plane or the center of the hexagon okay this is because we the the default one they will use this point as a rotation point. So what we're gonna do now is I will create some thing called area. You just search area, click this one, then I will link this curve to this as a geometry and use this centroid link to the plane. Now you can see the the refer referral point of the rotation change to the center of the hexagon already. Maybe I, I can uh, hide this uh, preview so you can see now. Okay, it will set as the center of the hexagon. Okay, so as you may notice by default, before this the rotation is using origo uh, is the center zero zero point now it changed uh, to the center of the hexagon already so the next step i want to put is uh, we call that uh, series okay just type series okay this one okay later i will uh, i will show why we put this thing here so before that, uh, what I'm going to do is I will link this series to the call the rotation here as an angle. So before that, I right click here and change this to degrees because we want to set the rotation angle as a degrees. So link to the series. What I'm going to do now is I will put another slide. Mm let's say this slide like i used before just alternate and will be duplicate then i set this as a rotation angle let's say rotation of angle then maybe i want to set of course the we can set 360 you know as a rotation angle then i will link this to the step here 
count, maybe I will follow the number of story as a count. Let me change a little bit. Okay. This link count, you want to make sure the 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 count for the rotation and the the geomet uh, what you call the floor must be the uh, same, right? Yes, I live. you can see now in the Rhino it will be reflected already automatic automatically. So if I change this rotation, you can see it will be circles at the center of the plane of the slab. So I can set, let's say I want to set the, the angle to 10 degrees. So we turn to 10 degrees, you can see. Okay. Now the next one, um, we will use the divide curve as a uh, tool for for the next step okay just for, uh, search divide curve you see this one divide curve okay then what i'm going to do is i just link this geometry to the curve here then automatically you can see for each of uh, reference lab here they have a point there you see or not so this node will be used to define the geometry of the vertical load bearing structure that we will be created later. Okay, before that, same thing, I will use this um, uh, slider to create another slider. Okay, then I think you maybe uh, already understand a little bit about that. So I will set uh, this slider to set the let's say the number of uh, a point or node okay and just set the number of the point maybe I, I want to set this as uh, 20 or maybe 25 and click ok then I will link this point number of point to this count so if I zoom it to the here you can see now the if I change this, automatically the point or node will be increased. So we can manipulate later to create some structural bearing for the the slab or parametric tower. Okay. The next step I want to do is um, maybe I want to put the uh, in the parameter in the graph support, just click this architect and under design I will uh, drag this flat parameter put to here okay then what I'm gonna do is I will link this geometry to here okay wait a little bit Okay. Sometimes it will take some time to do that. Just click this continue. So in Rhino, you can see oh, oh they have some thing error. It's okay. I just close that. It's okay. Sometimes it can come out like this. Uh, you know, uh, the the file sometimes it can be turned off automatically so i just open back in the first way find the graph super and then use this uh, this one open the key now. Luckily, I have a backup. <laughs> okay. So, I think I can just starting from here back. We already passed this thing. Maybe I just delete this first. Okay. And we can start from here. Okay.
wait for a while. Okay. Sorry, we go back to here. Okay. Starting from here. Let me link back the here. You can see now if I put that things, uh, this polyline, uh, different line, go back to Articat again. Okay. Okay. Let me link this uh, polyline to here and go to Archicad. Let me do something just with. Design, uh, design. This element. Because this is the one that we created before. Okay, just sell it all and delete it. Again, go back to 2D. Okay, now I try to link back again. 2D, yeah, to this one, and then link to here. Okay, Since I just uh, this rotation, this first, so we can back to the last one that we created. Okay, now should be okay. We're starting from this one back. Okay. Uh, you can see now the unique I think change. Uh, unique from millimeter to meter. Okay. Okay. Go back to normal. Okay. So. Just put the new thing called uh, Archicad under design and just put select here, okay? And link this geometry to the poly polygon here, okay? Automatically, if after linking that thing, I'm not sure why I turned to Rhino error. Let me try again. Sometimes, yeah, it can come out with like this error. Last time when I'm doing working well, I'm not sure why. Somehow it turned like this. Let's say we just find the rhino back. Just do a quick one. Okay, search cross super back. Break the whole thing. Okay, then we link back. Okay. Then from here, I need to move a little bit lower. Okay. And click this one. Same, go to file. Properties, change the unique to meter. Yeah, okay. try to break break the connection for a while. Yeah. Yeah, stop the connection. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes come out with some Because error. when it's trying to send constantly, sometimes the, the computer crashes. Yeah. It's good to yeah. have to have also the Boolean toggle that will it's a button that will allow you to stop the flow of, of constant information. 
so mm. that the computer can handle better the processing. Uh, let, let me check again. Uh, maybe try to do something like this one. Check. Okay. We try to link that again, the start the connection to the graph of course. Okay. Okay, so I, I need to go back to here to see what happened. Okay, just uh, I just delete this data first so it's easier for us to understand. So the idea is after we have this shape right on the rhino, then I will link maybe the division point to much. I just set this, maybe change this to 10 only. Okay. Then I will link this geometry to polygon here. So the idea is, you can see if I uh, open 3D, the archicad uh, flat will be replicated directly uh, same with that we created in the rhino okay so i think i need to open the backup file that i already created we try again but i will show the flow how how we can use to running the file so under here rhino graphic for open okay to be this is your graph so far. Okay. Far open this one. Okay. I try one last time because we don't have much time to show all. Break the connection. Try to start again. Okay. Try one last time. Link to polygon line here. Now you can see the slab here, right? Okay. So let's say I wrote, do the rotation for this slab. Maybe to um, let's say. 15 degrees you see in Nakikat also automatically it will be reflected so the idea is we can manipulate uh, the parameter directly from rhinoceros and uh, what you call uh, graph support and will be reflected in Nakikat okay so let's say I change more to maybe uh, 70 degrees Wait for a while. Okay, you can see now in Nakikat also changes. The 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 rotation is changed, right? Change. Okay. The next step I'm gonna do is, uh, I want to put some we call that um point list, point list. Okay. The purpose of this we want to create some structure bearing for the for the slab for each slab, right? Okay, I try to make it more faster, I think, because we don't have much time to do that. And then uh, I will find click metric here. Yeah. Okay, then what I'm going to do that, I want to put uh, this one, okay, geometry. I want to put the division, okay, divide curve, okay. Here I will link this geometry to here. We can get the point that I talked before. Then I will link this to the data here to get the record that the numbers. And let, let me try. Okay. The the idea is we want to make sure that the the this number is referred to to the right point when we put the load bearing letter okay okay 
So the next step before that I want to copy this one. I want to put this as a number of points. Number Okay, then link to yeah. Uh, before that, I want to decrease to maybe uh, maybe to ten only. Okay, then link to yeah. That's a count. Miss a point count lah. You see, if I move, we will turn to point right. Okay, what I'm gonna do now? After I have the point already. Then I, I will uh, uh, find, we call that interpolate here. And then I will link this data to the verticals. Automatically, you can see they have a link point there based on the degree. So I think we just rotate too much. I, change, I will change this rotation angle to maybe 10 only, 10 degrees only. So it's now turn to more smooth right and then the number of points maybe i want to decrease to just about 15 okay all right so the idea of interpolate we want to make sure that the number that we created before will be linked nicely you see 7 8 9 10 if we follow based on the metric that we already created the next step i want to do is i want to use archicad and use this beam tool then link this curve to the beam curve now what you can see in Archicad automatically we generate based on the line interpolate interpolate that we already created before uh, I want to do some tweak here mm. okay uh, just I go to beam setting okay link this beam setting to here then i want to set the let's say the uh, the height and width yeah right okay then i will link this both to the here height and width Okay. Well, you see, it turned to very big because it's assumed that as a 50 meter. So I want to use this one, change this to up to maybe 2 meter only and click OK. So when I move this to maybe, maybe 400 or 300, maybe 0.3. Now the structure will be turned very nicely, right? Okay. Okay, the next step I'm gonna show is if I go back to floor plan, how about if I change the refer point that we created before, the hexagon polyline? Right. So maybe I just uh yeah, okay. I move this polyline to something like more upper to 3000 here yeah? and then send changes okay wait for a while okay you can see now in here also will be changed based on the uh, shape that we already create uh, change as a polyline here so how about architect uh, if I click this 3D view, you can see also it will change. So you can imagine how how much time you can save when you using this Rhino Graph Super Link connection when you do your design, right? Okay, I think we have 14. Okay, I have another 10 minutes to show it. Uh, the last part is uh, I want to try to create something this. Uh, the last one using this geometry link to here you can see automatically you will get the your wall your glass wall of your building already and it can offer you can tweak something if you want but 
uh, let's say if I open the elevation, you even have your elevation of your tower already. Elevation, your maybe your north elevation, right? And then all the information is beam information. Let's say I click this uh, beam or this slab, right? Then I go to the setting. You can even see all the information inside there. Can we check, for example, the area for the um, the total floor area we have for the building? Yeah, even we can go to the schedule. Let's say I go to schedule. Then maybe I I just create something like uh, area. Let's see, right? Then I put something like slab. Yeah. And then put the area, let's see, right? Area plus maybe I divide by um, element ID. Okay. And click OK. Let's see, this is one of the examples. So if I go to here, you can see the area for each already calculated correctly. Then if I use this sum you can total some of the total area of the tower so you get already you see one 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 nine four two meter point exactly. four one meter so yeah. so we can have the model uh, being generated and anytime the whatever change we do we can see if the area is is still within the okay the interval that we should be yeah. So, so the idea of course, this is the simple example what you can do using Pyramid, uh, Graph Super and Rhino. Uh, the best part is that this is just uh, beginning. You even can do a lot of NERP or you know some weird modern like Zahadik also by using these tools. Okay, so I yeah. think uh, I think that that's all for the simple presentation of the parametric. So I will go back to the slide. Yeah. Yeah. Show let's us where see. we can get the information, or let's say if you want to learn this, if yeah. you want to. Let's see. We go back to the slide here. Okay. Can you you're see in the presenter mode. Yeah, you're in presenter mode. Can you see the screen now? Yes, Not but yet. it's on presenter mode, so we can see the slide you're on and the next slide. Oh, okay. Sorry. Wait. Go back to here. Okay. So uh, now I, I just go back to the slide. Um, it's, it's still showing on presenter mode. Okay. I think you stop sharing and you share again. Try to share again. Can you see now? Yes. Oh, shit. So, uh, you can see uh, that we, we have a learning resource of resources also. You can go to YouTube channel and search Rhino Graph Super Architect Connection Tutorial or you can uh, scan this QR code and we link directly to the specific uh, website. In here, not only the parametric tower, you can learn a lot of things also like you see creating a freeform shading device, creating a triangulated surface with the motto and so on. You can try play around with that and create your own design by just using using this tutorial. Okay. Uh, the other thing I want to talk about before we left the session, or oh, we have a graphics and learn also. This is uh, of course special for SSA user. You can go here and uh, from here you can see a lot of thing or program that we already created dedicated for the SSA user. Uh, to find out, you can scan this QR code and you can see from here they have a lot of course that you can learn and uh, they have our architect beam certification also and also the useful, useful tips okay I think uh, we can have uh, about two three minutes as a QA session okay you see any question uh, Marcelo on the you know, right there okay Okay, I think 
you have any question, you can ask in the Q and A. If not, then I will move to the next slide. Or maybe I could just move to the next slide. Uh, wrap up. We will do the wrap up after the session. So uh, we already done the session one right now. Got a particular live connection. I think uh, it's very maybe maybe to to general, but you can see the idea when you use that. Uh, like I say, you can just go to the link that I provide later um, before. Scan and first install the Rhino uh, service to your laptop, and then follow the you know the the training or uh, learn thing that I uh, can refer to the YouTube or what. And you have if you have any question, you can just refer to me or contact me. Uh, the next session supposed to be in 24 February 2021. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, the 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 title is will be Akikat Rendering with Sign Render. Hopefully you guys can join that. Okay. Uh, we have another couple of session later. We will join and uh, remind you. So uh, do follow us on social media. We have a. Uh, you can scan this QR code to go to our social media channel, YouTube, Facebook, and LinkedIn. I will give you uh, five seconds to, 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 to you know, snapshot this uh, uh, QR code. Okay. And then, before that, uh, if you have any information or you want to know about the price of the Archicad, or you want to uh, to know a little bit or uh, information about uh, Akikat, you do contact me uh, at the uh, A Riza by mail A Riza at graphics dot com or my phone number zero one one two five four seven six two one four. You also can uh, al uh, alias with uh, our sole reseller Noria Talit uh, from Crystalis Network at uh, the mail there. You see Noria Talit at uh, crystallisnetworks.com or by her form number is 0162280751 okay before i left this session uh we have another question uh, Marcella? did you see any question uh, no i just went through it was mostly uh, people saying that they could hear and they could connect it was just oh. a bumpy start and so um yeah, I would like to thank you all. Uh, mm -hmm. We will send you um, more invitations for the other uh, uh, events. So thank you all for joining and have a good day. Okay, thank you guys. Cheers. So I will end the session. Bye-bye. Uh,